I really love being a bishop because there are so many opportunities to see what God's doing in people's lives throughout the church. Everywhere I go, things are happening. The question came out, do we have permission to drive the family car? Are we limited in that? And I said, you have the keys to the car, drive the car. Try something new, just don't wreck it. I think the image is actually a good image about a mixed economy church. Different things are going to happen with different people. And uh, I think it's really exciting. Many different people are making many different things happen all across the diocese. So it comes as no surprise that when we ask the question, what is God up to? we get many different answers. We'd been talking actually about doing a summer day camp for kids, both within the church and in the wider community, for a couple of years. So we've got about 20 kids coming all day, every day for a week. And we are using a fairly standard vacation Bible school curriculum, but we are tweaking it so that it is an all-day program, because for families in this area, a half-day program really isn't going to work. I'm here as a counselor for uh, the games portion of the vacation church camp. This is the first time I'm actually in the leadership position running a program. As a youth member, I didn't really understand the role that the leaders played. And now I really appreciate it because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's really rewarding. Of the kids who are coming to the day camp from the community, I'd say maybe a third of them are members of another church and the rest of them are sort of people who I would say are the open to de church, you know, and our hope with this to try to make you know the gospel of Jesus Christ known to these kids and to make it exciting again and so that families can have it be a part of their daily life through the life of a church community. We have something that's a hopeful vision to contribute to the world. When we sense that actually we are participating in something that's hopeful, that gives us more energy too. The Holy Spirit is active at Church of the Messiah in a work of renewal. Uh, this is a parish that has been undergoing a tremendous amount of change over the last five, six years, and it's been my great privilege to be here for the last four. And in that time, I have learned that one must uh, apprentice themselves to the work of the Holy Spirit in their community. So to be here at Church of the Messiah and to see the work of the Spirit has been something like that. Uh, to be on the one hand, you know, so sort of desperate for something to come, and then yet it does come. The Contemplative Eucharist is an example of that. It arose as a response to people with a contemplative spirituality who wanted a service that had fewer words in it. So what we designed was a service of the Eucharist, which is stripped down to its barest and most essential uh, elements. It takes half an hour and involves a lot of silence. We have a discussion period where we talk about anything that may have arisen as part of our meditations. Uh, almost always people have interesting things to say about the scripture lesson for that day. Um, there's something about sitting with a scripture lesson in silence with other people that brings things out that would not have been discovered otherwise. Because this community is people that are very well formed in their faith already, they tend not to need a lot of the, the kind of milk uh, that St. Paul speaks of. Uh, instead what they need is, is spiritual meat. Um, they want to get into the depth of the scripture. They want to reflect on things that they've read in books um, about scripture. So because of that, we can skip a lot of the kinds of pedagogical um, teaching functions that happen on a typical Sunday morning um, because of the diversity of people that are there on a Sunday morning and go straight to the heart of things. Uh, so it's a very special and precious service. I go to parishes where uh, in some places there's growth, in other places there's not numeric growth, but there is real growth in their relationships, in the community life that they have, uh, in what they're contributing to their wider community. At four o'clock on Saturdays we hold an open jam session and that is open to any musician. We do have a core group of about 12 musicians and others can join in as they want to. At 5 o'clock we move into a simple worship service. We use the music from the jam session to lead our worship. We were looking at the idea of expanding our ministry into the neighborhood as we have been doing and to bring people in from the neighborhood and we see music as a great way of doing that. Music can create authentic community, can help us to create authentic community, and it does that in a number of ways. It helps us to express things that are honest and true and some things that are beyond words. 
I love the fact that this is a jam session, so people have to be looking at one another and playing off of one another and, and joining together to see what emerges. And finally, music is um, one of the most ancient ways and most instinctual ways that people enter into a place of prayer and are able to be honest in front of the living God. We're learning that when we talk to one another, when we can share with one another, we build one another up in Christ, and that is exciting. At St. Mary Magdalene's in Toronto, music continues to be used as a means of effective evangelism, drawing people in from the surrounding community and helping to connect them with God and each other. My name is Stephanie Martin and I'm the Director of Music at the Church of St. Mary Magdalene. First of all, the building itself is the most exquisite acoustic in all of Canada. The music made here is, is enhanced by the beauty of the building. So to sing here is not only a pleasure, it's a privilege. We are the beneficiaries of a great heritage here because Healy Willen arrived at St. Mary Magdalene's in 1921 and stayed here until he died in 1968. He established a tradition of music here that's really unique in Canada. And what we have during our Mass is the gallery choir singing from the west end of the church, polyphonic settings of the Mass, and our ritual choir at the front of the church singing Gregorian chant. And that sort of play with the geography of the building is uh, a, a wonderful expression of music and worship. I think we're inviting people into a relationship with Jesus Christ that is opening people to abundant life that Christ promises. Here in St. Thomas's, we are known for very careful, very passionate worship. And also we are known for very passionate outreach. St. Thomas's has cultivated its own parish garden, which is used as a source of fresh, nutritious food for its out-of-the-heat community meal program, which feeds over 100 individuals on a weekly basis. Through all of this, I think the biggest, most important thing God is doing is teaching us to be a body. Acting as a body means including each and every person in the community and enabling them and empowering them to carry on with the tasks that their gifts enabling them to do best. So it's not just a matter of having a lot of people together doing the same thing, but discerning and enabling and empowering people to cultivate their gifts for the sake of the mission of the wider church. So I go around the diocese, I see a vastly improved morale. In spite of the fact that we are not all the same, that we all do not think the same way, that we all do not act the same way, we are rooted much more fundamentally through our baptism into Jesus Christ and that we belong together. So I think we need to continue to learn what's going on um, around us, to look specifically at what God's doing in, in, in the world around us and to go and visit.